Welcome to All My God Ministries. I am your host, Reverend Anita Morris. I'm coming before you. It's a time of mourning in some instances regarding our nation. And we have a sect group, Jewish, Jewish descents, and a people group who are aimed at such an uh, act of force and also a massacre and prayers go out to those of the synagogue of the tree of life synagogue in pittsburgh and so hearts are heavy my heart's heavy and i prayed to the lord and he answered and in chronicles it says if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves seek my face turn from their wicked way then will I heal and restore their land. And that's what we need in our nation. A healing, a restoration, reconciliation to us, from us to God. Away from wickedness and the evils against humankind. No matter what extremist group, racial group, supremacist group, where there's wickedness, you know that the enemy is in the camp because the enemy come not but to steal, kill, and destroy. But God is giving life and life more abundantly. And then also, since I am also a, uh, a minister of the gospel and also a scholar, theologian, who have gone to school, who has my master's in divinity, so it's important that I look at the times that we live in and to be appropriated with the scriptures um, and I thank God for the spirit of of Christ the spirit of of God's Holy Spirit and within every believer and within the cosmos because it says it's not by human might nor by human power but by God's spirit so it, it doesn't mean how much accolade how much academics you have or how much human power you have God's spirit goes to and from the earth to see who those who fear him and he's bringing restoration he's bringing help to you and I just want you to be encouraged there's nothing as the Ecclesiastics the um, King Solomon of the Old Testament had mentioned there's nothing new under the Sun history has an, a way of repeating some dangerous um, moments and pivotals that we see now and at this moment we have an opportunity to make right decisions and to make good judgments regarding our nation and and regard people of character and not just because of their political race but look at the character of who's being in place and so as often how the anointing as some people who are versed in church models how leadership how it trickles down from the head to to those of their congregants. Also, sometimes whether you're in a military leadership, sometimes that same leadership, if it's not dealt with, it trickles down and it becomes a toxic environment. And some things that I, I see and I read on Air Force Times and I see some toxic leaderships are being removed from different various um, commands and that means that Human beings are not exempt no matter what status they are. But oftentimes in this generation, we look at different people groups. Again, I share a mixed heritage of African American and Native American history. So I am, uh, what do you call it, compassionate, not just by my own experience, but also God has placed that within me, not just experiential, but biblical faith and to know when, whenever I come in contact with other humankind and my fellow sisters and brothers to know where I come from and where God has, has called me into to know that he has no respect of persons and I thank God that his grace is sufficient that in weakness his strength is made perfect so I'm just going to give you a little synopsis of a little bit about our American history, also about 
my Native American history and some pictures and I just want you to enjoy and to know your roots some people are um, what do you call it making advancements to go ahead and order their birth certificates their family's birth certificates their mother's birth certificates to know where they come from and it's not just to have a head knowledge a heart knowledge or experiential knowledge and sometimes people say if it, it it didn't happen if you don't have evidence and so hey in the world we live in show that you have evidence know that you know you are a citizen I urge you to do all that documentation that you need not because you fear men but whatever is in your stewardship to know that you have all those things for your at your disposal and you're being resourceful um, with what God has given you ingenuity and intelligence to take care of your vital records um, in the history of our nation and sometimes uh, it's titled repeating crazy dangerous history I prayed on the 30th of October and I said dear Lord before even a word of supplication I had prayed a prayer for our nation but God has already answered he said in second Chronicles 7 13 and 15 at times I might shut up the heavens so that no rain falls or command grasshoppers devour your crops or send plagues among you then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and restore the land my eyes will be open my ears attended to every prayer made in this place and when we're praying on behalf of our nation and I think it behooves us that it's not just exclusivity of person it's a nation on our nation so sometimes we are not all clean we need to continue to reconcile with humankind with each other and to find peaceful ways to live at peace with one another and regard each other's um, differences and to find a way to live peaceable in unity and in harmony and not through wickedness okay a reading of Psalm 137 also will be helpful oftentimes when people are facing in captivity or or in refugee camps um, we're gonna even visit some of the atrocities on the Na Native Americans we're gonna visit the atrocities of Japanese Americans in 1942 and that some things that continues that you think has gone away has a way of repeating itself Psalm 137 hold one second Testament of the writings of Psalm 137. Of Golden Gay, Baker Commentary, Old Testament, Wisdom in the Psalms. Very awesome. <clears throat> okay, um, Psalm 137. Being mindful. It reads, By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat. Yes, we wept. We cried. When we were mindful of Zion, on the poplars in its midst, we hung our lyres, our instruments, because there our captors asked for the words of a song to entertain them. Our markers for joyfulness sang us one of the Zion songs. And then we reflect, how are we to sing Yahweh's song, God's song, on foreign soil? If I put out my mind, Jerusalem, the city of peace, or the city or our native land which you come from, whether, whether 
your descendants come in from a different area or whether you're Native American or whether or not that you're of course from and live and reside in the United States of America born and raised and your parents are from here and you just know that because you are a distinct uh, people group that some people say you don't belong here you belong God in Christ names you he come the very hairs of your hair on your head he knew you before you were in your mother's womb he called you by name and you belong not only in the family of God but you belong to wherever God has called you and you were born into okay and you are loved beloved it reads may my tongue stick to my palate if I am not mindful of you, if I do not lift up the city of peace above a pinnacle of my joyfulness. So whether you're lifting up your countrymen, whether you're lifting up those that have passed away at the Tree of Life Synagogue, let, let God comfort those who mourn, bear each other's burdens, and, and be ever lifted up. Let God show and minister mercy. It says, Yahweh, be mindful of the Edomites. Edomites represents treachery, atrocity given to us concerning where we are. It says, the people who were saying, expose it, expose it to their foundations of it. Okay? It says, and then it continues to try to ask for vindication, but we don't know and we don't need to recall vindication because vindication belongs to God. Who has mercy and shows mercy and it's also good timing when God shall stop all the wickedness and violence as we had mentioned about the reaping and the sowing okay so and it reads in this passage one of the commentators of the Mexico border it says even Keen who said his supporters the president's move predicted the troops will be eager to remain in the background and avoid any confrontation with unarmed refugees. And some think, has mentioned, Keen mentioned, I don't think they are looking forward to what it, this visual will be, he said, trying to provide some kind of human barrier to stop people from coming into the United States. I'm, I'm grateful that we serve an awesome God, that we do not have to have um, weapons of our warfare are not carnal, they're not with human beings, but they are mighty through God, through the pulling down of strongholds, every vice, every spiritual wickedness. But oftentimes, when we put it into human hands to protect and to defend, some of those measures may not equal up. It could be excessive of force, but we pray and keep our nation in prayer that it will not be excessive of force, but that God will do a new thing and that He's creating something better what the enemy intended for harm god can turn it around for our good the foreigners made prisoners then relocated captives to become forced laborers into camps the japanese americans in 1942 after world war ii in pearl harbor ronald reagan gave an award of twenty thousand dollars to surviving persons of that era and here's the clip President Roosevelt to take action. On February 19, 1942, FDR issued Executive Order 9066, which made it legal to relocate Japanese Americans from the West Coast. Over 120,000 Japanese Americans were taken from their homes, some of which were seized by white Americans. They could only bring with them what they could carry and were shipped to remote relocation centers. Once at the camps, they essentially became prisoners. 
nearly two-thirds of people interned were native-born American citizens. Over a thousand young people from the camps volunteered for military service. Eleanor Roosevelt strongly opposed the internment. She visited one of the camps and urged FDR to lift the order. We must not forget this. We must realize that one cannot tell the difference between a citizen and a non-citizen by just looking at him, by seeing the color of his skin, or by hearing him talk. In 1944, the Supreme Court ruled that the government's actions were constitutional. In January 1945, the executive order was rescinded. The internees were released. In 1948, Eleanor Roosevelt helped draft the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which prohibits the incarceration of innocent civilians. We must want our fellow human beings to have rights and freedoms which give them dignity and which will give them a sense that they are human beings that can walk the earth with their heads high and look all men in the face. If we observe these rights for ourselves and for others, I think we will find that it is easier in the world to build peace. On this 1988, President Ronald Reagan signed the Civil Liberties men in 20,000 cash reward to surviving persons of incarcerated. Okay. So that's the discovery of our history of the order of executive order 9066. Okay. The other one is called the tra um, Trail of Tears. Okay. Trail of Tears is one of from one of my ancestors in group Native Americans. Here is my aunt Sylvia Suggs. Her family who lived in 1912-1914 in Arkansas. They lived out there um, in Arkansas and they were forced to move to migrate to Oklahoma. Some were forced to migrate to the north and she ended up passing away at a wonderful age at 104 years old from 1912 to 2016 she lived 104 years and lived to see the depression wars um, this nation how it has evolved the millennials and she had a lot of laughter to give to us and give to my, my family and my parents. So God be the glory for her life and for her siblings. And here's a picture of her siblings and my mom. Here they all are. This is first, second, and third generation of Native Americans. And I, I'm in that part of people group. To God be the glory. And also African American. To God be the glory. So rich very rich rich history and i'll give you a clip of the trail of tears for thousands of years these mountains were home to the cherokee but they were just a small piece of their vast nation which covered 40 miles here in the Appalachian Mountains. In 1819, as more and more Americans started encroaching on Indian land, the U.S. government signed a treaty that guaranteed that Cherokee land would be off limits to white settlers forever. It clearly stated, all white people who have intruded or may hereafter intrude on in the lands reserved for the Cherokees shall be removed by the United States. Confident that the U.S. government now recognized its sovereignty over its own land, the Cherokee Nation proceeded to build itself a new capital in 1825, 
here in what's known as New Echota, Georgia. It had its own courthouse, council house, and post office, and equal space for the first Indian language newspaper office in the nation. In 1829, Andrew Jackson was elected U.S. President. He believed that Native Americans were savages and had no rights to their land, and began proceedings to remove the Cherokee from the southern states to clear the way for white settlement. The next year, he signed the 1830 Indian Removal Act, which set in motion one of the most brutal actions ever taken by the U.S. government. 1830 Removal Act. Thousands of Native Americans were pulled from their homes in Georgia and other states across the South. Many were shackled in chains and forced to walk at gunpoint more than gunpoint. 1, 1,000 miles west on a series of routes that all led to Oklahoma. Forced to leave to, to the third of the 15,000 areas who were forced to make the journey to Oklahoma. died on the way, which is one reason that journey came to be known as the Trail of Tears. The Trail of Tears. Their descendants are known today as the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians and live here on sovereign Indian land in Cherokee, North Carolina. Today, young Cherokee here at the local high school learn the language of their forebears. A vast stretch of their tribe's former land, right next to town, is now the Great Smoky Mountains National Park the most visited national park in the nation. Okay. And that's right near Asheville, North Carolina. So, no beloved that you are not alone in the atrocities of nations against nations and I believe that's also in the biblical text so just stay encouraged stay informed um, stay prayed up um, stay in love and godliness stay in peace so um, get the help that you need if you have uh, what do you call it explosions of your own heart that you feel Lord that you cannot bear it yourself go get the help that you need get counsel um, seek a chaplain myself Seek also those who are in medical field, psychiatrists, psychologists, or um, to discuss any of your issues. Um, also, keep in touch with each other. Um, have a network and continue to grow together. Um, have, a, what do you call it, your own informative groups and just continue to get involved, stay involved, um, stay informed. and. Um, and this is a time of growth, a time of reconciliation, a time to love, and a time to see exactly to make good choices in life. Um, and I thank God that he's given us stewardship. He's not allowing himself to force his way into our hearts, but he's allowing humankind to make the right choices. And it, again, like it said, it's not by human might, it's not by human power, but it's by God's spirit. Some things that we say, this person is doing this, but also you have to see the cosmos and see what's happening behind that. And if you are discerning, and if you have that discerning spirit, God will see best of how you should pray and how you should go in your prayer closet to pray on behalf of such people. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this nation. We thank you, Father, for the world. We thank you, Lord God, that you have not abandon us you have not forsaken us and lord god we thank you lord god for strengthening us we thank you lord god for hovering your holy spirit not just around about united states but about throughout the world in the name of jesus that you breathe your roha your breath your wind your spirit and lord god you say from the uttermost to the guttermost those who are without food shelter those who are experienced um, floods and all different uh, uh, catastrophic events, Lord God. We thank you for comforting those, those who lost their loved ones in recent days through deaths, through illnesses, through terrorist attacks, through hatred, through crimes, through racial disparities. Lord God, help us, Lord God. Help us to be a better people, a better humankind to each other. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. We just thank you, Lord God, that it doesn't cost us anything to be kind, Lord God. 
You said, but to humble ourselves, to seek your face, to turn from our wicked ways and to turn from you, that you might heal our land. And thank you, Lord God, we can count it all done. In Jesus' mighty name, thank God, amen and amen.